So we've all been there. You've given your phone to your friend to take a picture because you have worn that special dress you have been saving up for years. And you've now gotten it. And you're giving it to him and he takes about 50 pictures. You're happy, you go back to your dormitory, you go back to your room. And then looking through all the pictures, for some reason you can't seem to find the right one. For some reason, each of the pictures have a particular fault you wish you could correct. Well then, I have good news for you. This video is for you. This video, as the title implies, is about image editing or photo editing. And it's going to teach you how to do these minor corrections to make your picture look as you want. So hopefully, even if you're a child in class one or you're a grandmother, after this video, you should be able to correct your image to your liking. So now this is going to be very simple. You're not going to go too deep. I'm just going to do the basics and be very practical. So we're going to take some sample images and see what the problem is and see how we can correct them. So if you have these kind of problems in some of the pictures, you can correct them and get the picture to your liking. I'm Michelle Manuel and welcome to Take Hit. So tip number one, you have to make sure that the image is of high quality. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you get an image that was sent to you through WhatsApp image or Snapchat image, it's bad, you can't edit it because it's going to be terrible. What those social media apps do is that they compress the image such that there's no detail inside the image to even work, work with. So it's basically like taking a screenshot of your phone and trying to e edit what is coming. It's like, it's just not good enough. It's, the quality has been reduced, right? So if you want to keep the entire quality of the picture so that you can edit it, make sure you send it through something like iMessage if you're an iPhone because iMessage has the least compression. And also, you can send it through Telegram documents. However, if you only have WhatsApp, you can send it as a WhatsApp document. So I'm going to link how to send an image as a document to somebody else on WhatsApp. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using an app called Lightroom. However, what I'm going to mention under all these menus are to be found on every photo editing app so you should be fine with the photo editing app you have inbuilt on your phone so what do we know about photos from our video on mobile photography i'll link it in the description we learned that pictures are all about light and color right so i'm going to take care of i'm going to take care of light first then we go to color so when it comes to light there are different aspects of the light that you can control in terms of your image you have the exposure you have contrast you have highlights and you have shadows. So these are the four main ones that are going to tackle today. So what is exposure? Exposure is basically the overall brightness of an image. So here we have an app of choice, Lightroom, which can get on both Android and iOS for free. So when you open the app right here in the light panel, you realize that the exposure is right on the top. A word of caution that the exposure slider is a very sensitive one. So be careful not to drag it all the way to the extremes. So now, after I've gotten your picture, with the right adjustment, you should be able to get your picture's brightness to adjust right amount. Now be careful of the bright and dark areas as you're adjusting the slider. Because if you adjust it too low, you realize that you start to lose detail in the dark areas. And if you adjust it too high, well, you can see what happens. So try and adjust it and find the right balance between the bright areas and the dark areas. Let's try three examples. So let's take a look at one example for instance. This picture at a glance looks quite normal but then you realize that some places are quite bright, they are too bright. So what do you do? Go and adjust the exposure. So when we go to the light panel here, you can see we can adjust the exposure and let's see here should be just right. So remember we are not supposed to drag it all the way to the bottom. Now let's see the before and after. This is before, this is after. You can see the colors are now much more accurate and has a more, please, a more pleasing look to the eye now. So yeah, that's how you use the exposure slider. So let's move on to highlights. So what is highlights? Highlights are basically the brightest spots of an image. So here's one very good example of highlights and where to be used. So let's try and identify, as we mentioned, highlights are the brightest spots of an image. So let's try and identify the brightest spots. You realize that there are a lot of spots inside. The light here, 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 and here. And even the surface is quite bright. So what do we do if we want to make it look nice and even? Go to the light panel and the highlights are right here. Let's reduce the highlights and see what happens. We realize that when we reduce the highlights, right? Let's take a look at before and after. We realize that the bright areas become more cleaner, right? It doesn't become too much. If you can see what I'm talking about, it makes it more visible and more 
nicer looking right so highlights are very very useful in this kind of landscape scenarios where there are some bright areas that will be overexposed that will be too bright that will be shining in your face so these are kind of the scenarios that you it will be useful inside you can see even the colors on this side have become more colorful the original color has come to bear you understand what i'm saying yeah so next up we have shadows so what are shadows shadows are basically the darkest spots of an image so here's one perfect example where shadows be very practical now let's take a look at the picture you realize that it already has some bright areas in this for instance in the clouds in the rails and on the ground but then the main subject of the picture which is the person the face seems to be dark so now you realize that we mentioned that exposure increases brightness right now if you decide to increase the exposure you realize that it becomes too bright because there were already bright areas remember exposure increases the overall brightness of an image so in this case exposure is not the right one however shadow see if you look at the face you realize that the face is quite dark and the faces has a shadow cast on it the shadows of her face are on her face if you can see what i'm talking about so the shadows will be more appropriate for this now so let's increase the shadows and see something now you can see much of the face in the picture see the before and after now you can see there's much more information in the face the main subject is lit up and it doesn't overexpose the clouds it keeps the clouds because the clouds the information in the clouds are the highlights but the shadows are the ones that are dark and remember the definition of shadows is the darkest spots of an image if you look at it before and you have to realize that the dark spots have been brightened just the dark spots the bright spots have been left as it is the shadows are very 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 useful because most of the time when you take pictures of people and especially they are dark skin you realize that it tends to underexpose their faces tends to make their faces too dark so in the when you increase the shadows you realize that their faces become more brighter and you can see their faces more so shadows are very very useful let's take a look at an example so let's take a look at this picture also from our previous example now this time around you can see that the bright areas are quite bright but then the dark areas are also very dark what i mean by that is that take a look at the lights they are bright so you don't want to increase the brightness of the bright areas already but then you want to increase the brightness of the shadows area so you realize that if you increase the exposure everywhere gets too bright so we leave this exposure as it is it's the shadows you want to increase so you realize that when you increase the shadows then you can see more detail of the face since that is the main subject of the picture now before after you realize that just the dark areas have been brightened take a look at the lights have remained the same the board at the back has remained the same but then the dark areas of her face has been brightened so shadows are used for just the dark spots and it's very very useful when it comes to pictures like this where the main subject is a dark skinned person or there are some information in the shadows that you need the shadow slider would be very useful in retaining those details so now what is contrast contrast adjusts the range between the colors and the luminosity of the highlights and the shadows don't worry i told you it was going to be an easy one so look you don't need to keep the definition in your head for anything we are not going to write exam what you need to understand is the use case scenarios of contrast once you know what kind of scenarios you need contrast in you know how to use contrast so the definition is just for those who like writing notes so let's see some examples in which contrast are used this is one of, one of such examples now contrast is used for pictures that have a flat feel to it they look flat what i mean by that is let's adjust this one's contrast and see something now look at the before and look at the after it now has it has a pop to it it now has some life to it so contrast breathes life into a picture a picture that is flat a picture that does not have any pop initially you can see there's like some whitish cloud film all around the picture and contrast kind of declouds it right so contrast is used for this kind of flat image where nothing really stands out but then when you use the it the, the contrast brings out the life in the image so basically that's what contrast is used for let's take a look at an example so as another example we have this picture now at a glance it looks like there's nothing wrong with it but then for some reason it feels flat if you get what i'm saying like from the previous picture it there's no pop to it 
so what do we do we adjust the contrast so now let's adjust the contrast slightly and now let's see the before and after before after before after before so you see now there's a, a certain kind of pop to it like it stands out more it's the hair look at the hair becomes more black it, 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 it feels right it now feels like it's coming at you you understand even though it's not too much remember if you go overboard it will look like something else right so you have to find the right balance which is like right here exactly so culture is all about getting the pop getting the life out of the picture however it's not every picture you need to add contrast to if you look at it the before and after again you realize that it looks like it's adding color to it but then that's not the real essence of contrast you show some example where contrast really doesn't help in the color it doesn't give the life to it that's when you need more color actual color and that's vibrance and you come to it later on so let's use this picture as our example and use it as a recap now exposure as we learned increases the overall brightness of an image or decreases it when you decrease the exposure contrast gives the picture life makes it pop out so when you increase the contrast you realize that it gives it this pop to it and when you decrease it makes it more flat highlights control the bright areas of the picture so now if you increase the highlights and decrease it you realize that the bright areas become more bright and then when you decrease it the bright areas become dark and then shadows control the dark areas so if you look at her face and her hair where the shadows fall you realize that when you decrease it it becomes darker and when you increase it, it becomes brighter in those areas someone may ask why we didn't talk about the whites and blacks well we didn't talk about the whites and blacks because it can be found on every photo editing app but the four main ones that you can be sure to find on every photo editing app is the exposure contrast highlights and shadows however on this app which is adobe lightroom you can find the whites and blacks so what do the whites and blacks do Basically, the white is another form of highlights, but then they don't just control the highlights. They increase the white points, they increase the dynamic range. What I mean by that is, if you increase the white, you realize the bright areas tend to move to a white color, right? So if you take a look at the clouds and you decrease the white, increase and decrease the white, you realize that when you increase the white, it takes up the color of white, which is the white color. It might sound confusing, but then when you increase the white, basically the highlights become whiter right and for the blacks the opposite so when you decrease the blacks the shadows become blacker and when you increase it you can see less black in the image if it makes sense so let's try and use this image as our final practice image now taking a look at it it looks flat right so we mentioned that when the picture is flat you increase the contrast however when you increase the contrast you realize that it gives it this false color which is not really appealing so we don't do that so how can we still give it a contrast without adjusting the contrast slider well we can make our own contrast by increasing the highlights and decreasing the shadows and this will increase the pop even if you look at the before and after you realize that it's adding a certain level of pop to it so we can create our own contrast if the contrast slider doesn't seem to appeal to what we want to create right so taking the picture again it seems everything is alright, but I want the blacks to go blacker because the hair is supposed to be black, of course, and the camera tends to make the black areas quite grey. So when we decrease the blacks, we get a certain level of pop, and then already I think we are good to go. So even without touching the color aspect, you can see we can improve upon the picture's quality greatly by just adjusting some of the sliders in the light panel. So I think I overestimated the time going to be used for this video. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to divide it into two and make the video a two-parter. The first part we just did was going to be our light. And in a few days time, I'll leave the one which will be on a color. So after watching these two videos, you should be able to edit your picture to your liking. So until next time, I'll see you guys and see you very soon. Bye.